We've asked John Le Boutelier, a former Republican member of the United States House of Representatives, to join us via Skype. He is in Long Island, New York State, in the United States. Mr. Le Boutelier, very good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the Globe. Thank you for having me back on. Great to see you on this most unbelievably historic couple of days here in America. Historic indeed. And uh, most certainly because uh, we've seen a, a, a showdown between the two most powerful figures in the U.S. Capitol, uh, Speaker Nancy Pelosi and uh, Republican leader uh, Mitch McConnell. Uh, I mean, over who will have control over the impeachment proceedings. That, but then does Mitch McConnell have the necessary support of other Republicans in his backing of President Donald Trump? Yeah, yes, he does. Mitch McConnell and Trump are like this. They're completely together on this thing, even though. Mitch McConnell, as a U.S. senator, is going to have to take an oath when this trial begins in the Senate to pledge uh, impartial justice. Yet he came out the other day and said, I am not an impartial juror. And I think this has gotten everyone very upset. You, your clip a minute ago, uh, where uh, Speaker Pelosi today said the founders who created our Constitution anticipated a rogue president. But the rest of the clip said they anticipated a rogue president, but not also a rogue Senate majority leader. And that's what we have right now. Now, Mitch McConnell argues that unlike the previous two impeachment that uh, were preceded by years of investigations, the Democrats are now rushing President Trump's uh, matter in just 12 months. Do you, do you think it is actually rushed? <clears throat> no, I don't. I think they did it as quickly as they could. They didn't do it too quickly. They got all the witnesses they were allowed to have. If Trump had let other people come and testify and release other documents, then it would have taken longer. But as the second article, uh, Obstruction of Congress, points out, he put the word out that none of his staff was allowed to talk to Congress. And so Congress has the right to say, well, that's obstruction of Congress, which the same thing happened. I believe it was Article three of the Nixon impeachment. I think Mitch McConnell was dead wrong today when he said that this was unprecedented. It was entirely precedented. Now, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi won't commit to sending articles of impeachment to Senate. Why is she choosing the delay? And how does this affect the whole process? Do you think there is uh, an element of politicization? Well, we had a poll here on Tuesday by ABC and The Washington Post that showed that 71 percent of the American people want witnesses called and presented at the trial in the Senate including 56% of Republican voters want witnesses called. But McConnell and the Republicans have tried to say, we're not going to have any witnesses. It's going to be a very quick trial and we'll be done with it. And so what she is doing by holding up the articles is trying to see if she can goose McConnell into committing to calling some witnesses at that trial. For instance, simply, let me tell you, the National Security Advisor, during this whole scandal with Ukraine, John Bolton, the guy with the white mustache, he has not said a word. He, he was fired by Trump in September, right when this thing came to a head. And he did not appear in the House of Representatives. And everybody wants to hear what this guy says about what went on. What, what did Trump tell him about it? What was ordered to be done? Now, why should he not have to tell this to the American people at a Senate trial? That's what they're holding up these articles for, is to try to force witnesses like that to come forward. But then, is Nancy Pelosi within the confines of the law in delaying these articles? She is. It specifically says in the Constitution that Senate trial will begin immediately upon the transmission of the articles. So she's, first of all, waiting because today's the last day of Congress for the holidays. We have Christmas and New Year's. And they come back, I believe it's uh, January 7th. And I mean, I'm guessing that she'll probably transmit it between now and then. And then the trial will begin shortly thereafter. 
but she can wait longer if she chooses to. Well, but Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is not at all bending over backwards and agreeing uh, anytime soon to the parameters for the Senate trial that the Democrats have called for. Uh, what is this issue about these parameters? Well, he, she's trying to force him to bend over backwards. He's dug his heels in, you're right, and said no one's going to push me around and this is all garbage and he in effect, waved it away on the floor of the Senate. Uh, and that is the view of Republicans, you know. But the Democrats have 47 seats in the Senate, and they have some power over there. And, and their leader, uh, Chuck Schumer, is going to meet with McConnell today or tomorrow, I believe, to try to hash out what they're going to do in a trial. And I think the main thing is this issue of Four witnesses that the Democrats want to call. The White House Chief of Staff, the former National Security Advisor, John Bolton, and two other officials who were involved in this thing. Well, Nancy Pelosi said on Wednesday night that uh, the House Democrats will make the decision as a group on when to send the articles to the Senate. When is this? Well, first of all, it's going to be her who makes the decision. They, they do whatever she tells them. She's the, the strongest leader. And they have obviously not yet decided. Now, today is the last day of the House. They were passing one more big piece of legislation today and then leaving for the break. But she can decide. And she's waiting for Schumer and McConnell over in the Senate to have this private conversation. I wouldn't be surprised if she holds this up way into January. And in effect, pulls these articles of impeachment over Trump's head and they make a campaign for a few weeks. Why are the Republicans afraid of having these witnesses? And I think if they push that for a few weeks, it may catch on. A majority of people, as I said, want these witnesses to be made to testify. You know, Mr. Lebotilia, the name Donald Trump has become some sort of a swear word. He's now become a plague that no one wants to listen to. So should we listen to him then uh, when he says that, uh, you know, this impeachment underlines and reinforces the overwhelming partisan divide? Yeah, it's a swear word to everybody other than the 40 percent in America who are basically in a cult of Donald Trump's personality. That's the Republican vote today. They are totally in with Trump, like a cult is with the cult leader. And to everybody else, he is a swear word. You're right. But to those 40% who could theoretically win the election this November, that's why this keeps going, is, is Trump still has popularity. And if, uh, well, if the Senate does not convict him, then now that the impeachment uh, is already in progress, would he be allowed to run? Absolutely. Absolutely. He will run. He will be the Republican. And many of his advisors have told him you can take this impeachment and use it to your benefit in the election, which I think he would try to do. I don't think as of today that probably works. The election is 10 and a half months away. It's a long way. As we see, a week is a lifetime with Trump. There's so many things each day that are so outrageous that by the time the week is over, you, got, you take a breath, you go, my God, I can't even remember what it was like one week ago. So how's it going to be next November? Are we really going to spend a lot of time on January and February? Look, you know, thinking back on it, I doubt it. All right. And then uh, how then would this affect the Republican camp? Uh, well, not just Donald Trump, but to the Republican, the Republican camp uh, insofar as uh, garnering enough support in next year's election. Well, that's everything is based on that question. No one really knows. But the polling, I'll give you an example. Today in the new NBC Wall Street Journal poll, when asked, who are you going to vote for in November? Uh, 48% of the American people say they absolutely will vote against 
Donald Trump. 48. 34% say absolutely they will vote for Trump, which is a terrible number for a president, by the way. Only 34% are certain to vote for him. But 14% say, well, it depends on who the Democratic nominee is. So if the Democrats nominate the right person, they're going to win the election. If they nominate the wrong person, like what happened in Great Britain on Thursday, uh, the other day, when, when, a week ago, when, when they picked, when Jeremy Corbyn was the labor leader, he was unelectable and it caused them to get wiped out. Same thing here. If, we, if the Democrats pick the wrong person, they'll get beat. But if they pick the right person, who I think is Joe Biden, he will beat Donald Trump, and probably quite easily. What is more adverse, Ms. Uh, Mr. Nabutila? Is it the conviction by the Senate after voting, or is it the actual impeachment itself? I mean, the reason I'm asking this, I, 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 I mean, I, I need to find out if the Senate uh, does not at all uh, vote to impeach him, then what is the whole point of this process? Well, we've never removed the president. We've had two Senate trials, and in each case, Andrew Johnson and Bill Clinton the president survived the trial. But it was in Bill Clinton's second term. Andrew Johnson did not run again. Nixon would have been removed. That was in his second term as well. So we don't know the effects of this thing politically because Trump, of course, is running for re-election. Now, why did it? Why do it? Well, they did it, the Democrats did. And, and Nancy Pelosi did not want to do it. Remember, Eight months ago, she was the reluctant impeacher. And the Democrats gave her a lot of grief for not impeaching Trump. And she said, he's not worth it. We're not going to do it. Only when he did the thing with Ukraine to try to rig the election in his favor. That's when she said, we have to impeach him to put a stop to it. Because if we don't impeach him, he'll keep doing it right up to the 2020 election. So they have to go ahead. And the fact that the Republicans won't go along with it, I mean, Nancy Pelosi can't be blamed for that. It's the Republicans who choose to go down the wrong road with Donald Trump. Mr. John DeBoutelier, a former Republican member of the United States House of Representatives, speaking to us live via Skype. Thank you so much for your time. It's always a pleasure chatting to you. Much appreciated.